Hello. So for our project, we decided to model algal blooms. So to start with, I'm going to share my screen because I want to show you the local impact of these algal blooms. So algal blooms are when there's an overabundance of algae. Um, sometimes they're harmful to human health. Sometimes they're not. Um, they often cause the water to turn different colors, shades of blue or shades of green or shades of red. Um, they happen here in Vermont in Lake Champlain. And this, uh, this map here from the Vermont Department of Health uh, shows some of the different algal blooms uh, incidents that occur throughout Lake Champlain uh, with varying degrees of harm. Um, so you can see it does have a, a sort of local effect there. Um, they're often caused by eutrophication, which is an overabundance of nutrients in the water, such as nitrogen and phosphorus. Um, and when the al algae gets out of hand, it will lead to die-offs of fish from oxygen deprivation. So we were interested in modeling this to better understand what conditions lead to algal blooms. So the first thing we were really interested in looking at is how the rate of algae formation affects whether or not a, an algal bloom is going to occur. Um, the second thing we were interested in is um, whether the rate of pollution matters in the formation of algal blooms. And third, uh, we were interested to look at the initial conditions. So how much pollution first off, but also whether it's point source pollution, meaning coming from a specific part of the lake, or non-point source pollution, meaning pollution spread throughout the lake. Um, so our CA model that we made with algal blooms uh, has a few assumptions baked into it. First is we assume that algae and pollution take on binary states um, in order to make a CA model. Um, and we know in reality that there are instead actually like degrees of algae and degrees of pollution um, in various areas of a lake. Um, so, so even though this doesn't map onto reality, it is a very helpful discretization that allows us to treat this as a CA. Um, we also, there's no universally agreed upon cutoff for what defines when an algae, algal bloom actually occurs. So we decided that we're defining it for our purposes as when the algae takes over the majority of the lake. Um, finally, we made a number of assumptions about um, how pollution actually spreads throughout a body of water, which Jackson is going to get into now. Cool. So um, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, our model. Um, so the cells in our model could be in three different states, which were uh, clean, polluted, or algae. Um, we had 100 cells, or 100 by 100 cells, with periodic boundaries. Um, and we used a Moore neighborhood. And then we um, had five stochastic processes that kind of determined how our model um, evolved over time. Um, and so the first one of those was the probability that uh, clean would turn to polluted. Um, and so that was kind of to model um, the idea of pollution diffusing through the system and also to um, have that non-point so, uh, source of pollution that Zach mentioned. Um, so there's also a chance that polluted would become clean. That's sort of the idea that uh, diffusion and filtration will take some of the pollution out of the system over time. Um, and that was fixed for our experiments. And then uh, there's also the chance that polluted will turn to algae, and that's the idea of a, a bloom growing because of too much nutrients in the water. Um, there's a chance that that clean would turn to algae, and so that's kind of the idea of algae growing uh, naturally. And we left that really low for our experiments because we were more interested in how uh, pollution actually causes that that algae growth. Um, and then there's also a chance that algae um, would die over time. And so we also left that low because um, algal blooms are actually really hard to remove in, in nature. Um, so our model was pretty standard. We uh, initialized uh, using percolation to set some of the states to be, some of the clean water to be polluted at the beginning based on some probability. Um, and then for every step, we iterated through every cell and um, we counted the neighbors of each type of that cell. And then for each of our different types, we applied those probabilities that I mentioned earlier. So these are the uh, probabilities for clean uh, turning to the other states, the probabilities that polluted will turn to the other states, and the probability that algae will turn to the other states. Um, yep, so I think next Missy is going to talk about um, our methods and results. Uh, for methods, we wanted to um, freeze the fixed parameters and modify the two varying parameters that we have independently. So we have 
um, the pollution rate, which is represented by PROB clean to polluted, and we wanted to see at which values um, do we reach a threshold of 50% algae as an end state. Um, and then after that, we wanted to fix it at a healthy level and see what happens when we modify the probability that uh, algae develops um, in pollution, which can be seen as the algal growth rate. Um, so we can see that we reached the threshold state of 50%, um, around 0 0.036 for probability of clean to polluted. Um, anything above that uh, becomes an algal bloom. And then we can see here that as we increase the pollution rate, um, we increase the frequency or size of an algal bloom. Um, the next parameter that we modified uh, was the algal growth rate. And when we grew the growth rate, we actually found that um, the algal bloom size decreased. Um, so it's inversely proportional to the algal growth rate. And this can be seen as the algae grows and dies faster than pollution enters the system. Um, so there's no, not enough pollution to supply the algal community. Um, so as we increase this, you actually see a very healthy end state of water. Um, for point first testing, we still have some work to do. Um, right now, having a very high uh, particular source of pollution um, does not have a big effect on the size of the algal bloom uh, because it really just increases proportionally with the size of the pollution incident. Um, so what we actually want to see is how does the surface area, not the uh, incident area of uh, pollution affect uh, the rate of change of algal bloom. Um, so that's all.